proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Frank Andrews, Marisa Burke, meteorologist Paul Hefner, and Jay Christopher Sports. This is Newswatch 16, midday. Good afternoon, everyone. Mine subsidence is a common problem in this area. It's almost something that we've all learned to live with. But this morning in Pittston, something happened to remind us all of the potential danger of mine subsidence. Now, it happened underneath the front porch of this house at 140 Mill Street in Pittston. The owner, Mike Gato, says a hole opened up about 15 foot deep and a cat was trapped in the pit this morning. About 9.30, some state environmental officials showed up. One man hooked up to a safety line, climbed into the hole. Now, if you listen close, you can hear the cry of the cat and watch the rescue. Remind me of her. All right. How far was he in the hole? Uh, he was back maybe 20, 25 feet, but down 10 or 15. How was he trapped? Uh, he was wedged in the corner. Officials say there is a mine flushing project going on in the area of Mill Street in Pittston, and there have been some mine subsidence problems in that area in the past. As you can see, the cat is okay today. You've got less than 48 hours left before the price of a first-class stamp goes up. This Sunday, the price goes from 20 to 22 cents at the post office. But remember, post offices are only open a couple of hours tomorrow in only some locations. And they're closed Sunday and Monday because it's a federal holiday. So today, the windows are pretty busy with people buying 2 and 22 cent stamps. Newswatch 16's Marisa Burke is live at the post office off Stafford Avenue in Scranton to tell us about the rush at the post office. Marisa? It's, Frank, it's been definitely a rush today. Here at the Davis Street Post Office in Scranton, it is really busy today. And we're told Postal Service has been up all week. We're told lots of people are mailing before the postage rate goes up on Sundays. Now, these are the new stamps. You'll see on letters next week, 22 cent stamps. They've been available since the beginning of the month, but the stamps go into effect Sunday. The folks who mail a lot will feel the rate hike the most. Folks like Bob Stroney and Jeannie Pazalia, who own a small business in music. We use about $100 to $150 worth of postage a month, so it would affect us. It's about, about a 1% or 2% increase, so uh, our postage will go up significantly because of it. How do you feel about that? I don't like it. Anytime it costs us money out of our pocket, it's not so very good for the business or for us. So once again, postal officials say there are lots of two-cent stamps available for those of you who need to use the 20-cent stamps. And once again, the postal rates do go into effect. Sunday. Marisa Burke, Newswatch 16, live with the Instacam in Scranton. So you got to mail them Sunday at 22 cents, but the post office isn't open again until Tuesday to buy the two cent stamps. Is that right? Thank that's, you, Marisa. That's right. In one junior high school in Lycoming County, the curriculum goes beyond reading and writing and arithmetic to include sports events aimed at molding the classmates together. As Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens explains now, one principal in Hughesville says the intramural sports program helped kids feel that they're part of the school program. This, believe it or not, is a class. Now, you won't find it in any course outline, and the kids don't get credit for it, but they are learning something. You see, these eighth graders are divided up by home rooms twice each week to play games against each other. This game is to dress up, run around a pylon, and come back so the next person can do the same thing. Now, it's a lot of fun, but there is some psychology involved here. The idea is to get the kids working together and involved. Students who usually don't have academic success or feel a part of school. It gives them a chance to be part of their school and become uh, with a color and their spirit and their sportsmanship and feel really good about themselves. One of the things we find with our activities, many of them are geared to the high school uh, student. And these are geared strictly for 7th and 8th grade and their age level where they can have a good time together and realize you don't have to get into the drug culture and some of the other sophisticated activities of the upperclassmen. I'm told this actually cuts down on absenteeism because the class with the most points at the end of the year gets a party. Get you out of classes and it's fun. It's fun to race the other classes, see who can win. You know, this is supposed to be a learning experience for you. Do you look at it that way or is it just fun? It's just fun. There's one other good thing about the competition, and now that it's over, the organizers say it lets the kids get some of the spice and vinegar out of them, and they can uh, concentrate on their schoolwork. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Hughesville. Newswatch 16 Midday continues in a moment with another man set to get an artificial heart, plus a Luzerne County murder trial heading to the jury. We'll explain when Newswatch 16 Midday returns. 
Grandpa Stroman with the tastiest part of the day. Mmm, your sunbeam tastes great. And keeps you going. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, anytime, mine sunbeam bread is the tastiest part of the day. And I never use artificial preservatives. My kids love it. And I know it's nutritious. That's because I make sure the goodness is baked in. You're so good, Grandpa. <laughs> That's what they all say about mine sunbeam bread. Hi, I'm Mel Webb with High Point Home Furnishings. I have three truckloads of furniture direct from the manufacturer. Original oil paintings from hundreds of professional artists around the world. Nothing over $39, most under $15. Three-piece living room, five-piece pit, and ranch groups, your choice, $198. New mattresses, $38. New recliners, $99. This Saturday from 11 till 8, Sunday 11 till 5 in Scranton, Dixon City at the Treadway Inn, I-81 and Route 6. Police officer, hold it! This is Jack Klugman. Here are some scenes from the next episode of Quincy. When you found out he didn't have a weapon, you held the gun six inches from his head and you fired. No! It's open and shut. A clean-cut case. I think your man is lying. Does that mean because you're a cop you can break the law? Well, thank God it doesn't work that way. Are you in collusion with the police department? I can't let him get away with this. And he already has gotten away with it. And I hate to say it, Quincy, but you helped him. Me! Jack Klugman is Quincy today on NEP. R.M. Taylor Company retirement sale going stronger and many more reductions on in-stock garments. Our president, R.M. Taylor, will retire on April 1st. However, the company will continue in business after April. Meanwhile, tremendous values exist to reduce inventory of over a million dollars. Don't miss your opportunity to obtain a famous fine quality R.M. Taylor fur at 218 New Street, Quakertown. Open six days from 9 to 5, Monday and Friday nights 7 to 9. This is the beginning of a three-day weekend for lots of people, four-day weekend for some kids who are out of school today, so they want real nice weather. Keep that in mind, Paul. Okay, Frank, we have to deliver on that, and a lot of folks do have a three-day weekend coming up, and certainly uh, we'd like to see a nice uh, sunny weekend with no storms, and I think that that will be the case this weekend because we are entering a weather pattern that doesn't bring too much in the way of precipitation, and we're off to a good start right now with some sunshine out here. Let me show you the current readings. It is a cold sunshine today, though, but the temperature is steadily climbing. Right now we're standing at 23 degrees. The relative humidity is low at 53%. The wind from the southwest still a little bit on the brisk side at 13 miles per hour. And the barometer at 29.93 inches and holding steady. And there's some water flowing out there. Also some ice on some of the ponds. So some pretty good skating this weekend with temperatures that are pretty close to normal. The Newswatch 16, the color satellite picture, shows you lots of precipitating clouds just offshore. The bright clouds with rain and snow. Otherwise, there's a nice corridor of sunny weather from Burlington, Vermont, down through eastern Pennsylvania into the Carolinas. But there are still some flurries persisting across New York State, where they will see about one to three inches of snow this afternoon. And that extends back into Ohio. But no concern to us because the snow flurry activity is moving off to the northeast. We're looking at this high pressure system to come in for tomorrow and to give us a nice day, but it's sending cool air all the way down into Florida where it was 24 degrees in Tallahassee this morning and there are some rain showers across the Florida Peninsula. Otherwise, warm weather out west, 90 degrees in Los Angeles yesterday. That is really like summertime out there. And this next storm system will be the next weather maker for us here in northeastern Pennsylvania. That'll be on Sunday, but I don't expect it really to be a big storm here. Jet stream today shows cold air coming down from Canada and into Pennsylvania. It's not frigid cold, it's not coming from the Arctic Circle, but it's coming from Western Canada and moving into Pennsylvania. Now, as I see it for Sunday, the jet stream is going to flatten out a bit, and you can see that the source of air is from the Pacific. And that means milder temperatures coming in. So I expect to see temperatures next week that should be in the 30s for the most part. And that will feel awfully good after we've had temperatures in the 20s for the past couple of days. Now let's go back to tonight's weather map. And I can show you that, indeed, uh, the front is offshore. There is some precip precipitation with it, but that's also offshore. A few snow flurries back over the western counties of the state. No concern to us. We are looking at this front here with the storm to come in on Sunday. It'll just bring clouds. I don't really expect to see any precipitation with it, so it's still good for people who are traveling this weekend. In fact, our weekend uh, travel forecast for tomorrow shows still a few lingering clouds, maybe a few flurries across the northern tier of the state. But if you're heading to the east, to New York, Philadelphia, Boston, uh, lots of sunshine. Temperatures will be in the 20s to the north 
and in the 30s to the south. Now the forecast for this afternoon calls for partly sunny skies. 30 degrees in DuPont, Penargel coming in around 33 degrees. Temperature is just a little bit warmer down in Atlas and down toward Northumberland and Snyder counties in the 30s, but to the 20s to the north up in uh, Grover and Canton because they are a little bit further into that colder air. The southwest wind will be coming in at 10 to 15 miles per hour and it may shift around a little bit into the west later on. Okay, now the forecast board. 30 degrees for a high temperature today under partly sunny skies. Clear skies tonight. A nice weekend coming up. Maybe some cloudiness with that storm system on Sunday, but no big storms. Fair weather going into Monday. So, Frank, make it a good weekend. You have a good weekend too, Paul. Thank you very much. Tim Carlson is up next on Newswatch 16 Midday with the Sports Watch. In a moment, we'll go to the fights at the Joe Louis Arena. The only problem is it's supposed to be a hockey game. Sports Watch 16 is next. Wolf's must clear out current inventory now and will do almost anything to reach that goal. Wolf Furniture and Wolf's Today's Living present a chain-wide warehouse sale. A $10 million warehouse inventory at savings to 50%. Save one half on selected sleep sets by Sealy and Stearns and Foster. Yes, one half off these plush sleep sets. Well, the prices of Wolf's furniture was better than what other places that we looked at. It's easy to see we mean business during our giant clearance sale going on now. Wolf's the best of everything. Welcome back, everyone. Jay Christopher is up. I know you're going to save that uh, fight for later, but I'm really dying to see it. It looks like a real rough and tumble. Oh, yeah. It's, it's great educational material for our kids, too, about hockey, right? A close call for number three Michigan last night as they tangled with Big Ten rival Iowa in hoops. The 11th-rated Hawkeyes had chances to pull off the upset, but just couldn't do it. Roy Tarpley was the only player who could hit the hoop early in the game. He put it all the first of two of Michigan's first 16 points and had 17 at the half. Greg Stokes was top man with eight for Iowa in the opening 20 minutes. Michigan by one at the half. The Hawkeyes overtook the Wolverines in the second. Jerry Wright's leaping tip in right there pulled them to within one. Later, a three-point play by Stokes put Iowa up 45-44. They built the lead to five, but Greg Thompson came off the Michigan bench and twice from the outside to make it 49-48. And watch this move by Antoine Joubert. He gave Michigan the lead. Here it is, right up the lane. Isn't that pretty? And Tarpley's jumper increased it to three points, Michigan's lead. Iowa failed to capitalize on Michigan mistakes, and the Wolverines held on to win over Iowa 56-52. Let's check the scoreboard now. There you see number three, Michigan, over number 11, Iowa. Number eight, Syracuse, strolled over Seton Hall 94-62. Number 12, Louisiana Tech over Southwest Louisiana 83-76 in OT. Number 17, Illinois over Northwestern 64-42. And number eight, Oregon State outlasted Washington State 69-49. Now, despite another the great performance by Bernard King. The New York Knicks, the cellar dwellers in the NBA Atlantic Division, lost to Houston again last night. King, the NBA's top scorer, had 29 points. There's two of them right there, but Houston's Akeem Olajuwon put in 30 and pulled in 25 rebounds. Here, the great outlet pass to Ralph Sampson. Houston won it by eight. Let's go to the NBA scoreboard now. Boston over Seattle, 110 to 94. The Celts have won 42 games, most in the league. Houston over the Knicks, 113-105. Milwaukee beat Indiana in overtime, 132-128. San Antonio over Phoenix, 131-102. And Denver over Kansas City, 138 to 123. Okay, Frank, last night in Detroit, it was another case of men will be boys as the Red Wings and North Stars played more than just hockey. The first period was just coming to an end when Willie Plett of Minnesota and Greg Smith of the Red Wings renewed a fight that had started earlier in the game. Both benches cleared and the fun began. I guess you can call that fun. The fisticuffs carried over to the Detroit bench area where Danny Gare of Detroit and Minnesota's Dino Cicerelli danced. You'll see it in a second here. These guys had a real good time, and they punched and pulled hair. It's so sportsmanlike. Even the coaches got into it. North Star's head man, Glenn Sonmore, wrestling with Nick Polano of the Wings. A lovely scene last night, I'll tell you. All right, other teams decided to just play hockey last night, and in the Boston-Los Angeles game, a little man made a big mark. The Kings' Marcel Dion passed Stan Makita to become the NHL's third all-time goal scorer. He's now behind Gordy Howe and Phil Esposito on the all-time list with 1,468. The goal came for Dion in the second period. All right, the scores in the NHL. Minnesota and Detroit in that brawl game, 5-5 in OT. They couldn't even decide that, huh? Flyers over Quebec last night, 6-3. Hartford beat the Devils, 4-0. Chicago over Pittsburgh, 5-4. St. Louis beat Toronto, 5-3. Washington over Calgary, 4-3. L.A. and Boston, a 3-3 tie 
in overtime. Joe Zone will be here tonight at 6 with a very special Friday's Hero story you'll enjoy watching. And of course, all the high school hoops and wrestling scores on the update at 11. One note about college basketball over the weekend. Kings versus East Stroudsburg women will be played Sunday night at 6 o'clock instead of Monday at 6. The men's game will go on a scheduled Monday night at 8 o'clock. Okay, thanks for updating. Have, have a good, good weekend. You Good too. to have you here, Tim. Mm -hmm. News Watch 16 Midday continues with a Friday forecast for fun. We'll tell you about some of the great things going on in the weekend when News Watch 16 this midday returns. They were the biggest fishtails in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. This week on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, we'll announce the lucky winners of the fishtail contest. Plus, we'll meet illustrator George Schelling, who designs covers for famous magazines like Field and Stream. We'll also go ice fishing at Lake Wallenpuffack and get some tips and reports from area anglers. All this plus the astronomy tip of the week, only on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, tomorrow on WNEB TV 16. And finally today, since our meteorologist Paul Hefner is guaranteeing us sunshine at risk of his own personal safety for the weekend, and si <laughs> since many people are already getting cabin fever from the snow and the rain that's been keeping us indoors, here's a listing of some of the things that are going on this weekend in our area. Now at the Toby Hanna Army Depot tomorrow, the Winter Carnival is going to take place. It features ice skating, sledding, food, and fireworks, and it all starts at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Now at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, there is going to be a 50-mile snowmobile trip to benefit the Easter Seal Society. The program is going to be held at the Black Forest Inn that's near Jersey Shore. Now, to ride, you have to pay an entry fee of $20, but it will benefit the Easter Seal Society. Also on Sunday, there is a sleigh ride event that's scheduled to be held at the Sullivan County Fairgrounds in Forksville. And tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday, each evening at 8 o'clock, the musical Countdown will be performed at the Danville High School. And that's just a listing of some of the things that are going on. There's lots of natural beauty here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, lots of ski slopes. So enjoy your weekend. For the Midday Crew, I'm Frank Andrews. Have a good day, everyone.